Hey guys, Nick here and welcome back to another video. We're back into the DaVinci Resolve tutorials. I know it's been a while, been busy moving back overseas, but now we're all settled. We're gonna get into it. And this is one that I get a, quite a few questions about and definitely something I was looking into when I was first getting started, which is how to create a social media lower thirds for use when you're a YouTuber or you're creating videos and you wanna obviously promote yourself. So something like this, and this is a tutorial more for beginners. As you can see here, we have our logo that pops in and then disappears. A really quick and easy effect to create as it is. Simple animations, nothing too hectic. Really great if you're just getting started. So let's jump into DaVinci Resolve. I'm gonna create a new timeline, social media test. And we're also going to go new fusion composition and just call it social media lower third. And we're gonna jump across into Fusion, double click on the social media lower third and open it up. Now I'm just gonna close the spline editor. Your Fusion page should look a bit like this once you have opened that new Fusion comp. If it doesn't, you might just not have the inspector shown or you might not have the media pool open. Either way, no big deal. So I'm just gonna resize this a little bit. We're gonna go over to our media pool and we're going to Command I or Control I to import an image in downloads. And I've got a logo here, here we go. Instagram logo, we're gonna open that. And you can just find this by Googling on Google, Instagram logo, Facebook logo, Twitter logo, whatever you want, that's how we're gonna do it. All right, so the first step we're gonna do is create a background. We're gonna just drag it in from the toolbar here, background. We're gonna just drag and connect it to our media out node. And our media out node is currently displayed in the viewer here. And if the media out viewer isn't showing here, all you can do is click on the node, click and drag into the viewer to release it. All right, next we're going to drag our logo into the fusion composition. So we're just gonna click on the image, drag and drop, and release. Now we're not gonna see anything and that's because currently it's just sitting by itself. If we wanted to see it, we could just click on that node and drag into the viewer. There you go, you can see our Instagram logo. Now don't worry about all this checker mark here. That is just to show that this is transparent in this section here. And that is just part of the image that I downloaded from Google. All right, so we're gonna just drag this media out node back into there, and we're gonna join them together. And the easiest way to do that is to grab the output of the media node and drag it to the output of the background node, and it's gonna slap it right on top, just like so. So let's just do a quick little bit of organization. We're going to right click on this node, and we're just gonna rename it. We're just gonna call it Insta logo, logo. That way we just know what's going on. And what we wanna do now is obviously that logo is just a little bit too big. We're gonna to wanna to resize it. Now to do that, the easiest way is to add a transform node in between the logo and the merge. And we can do that just by having the logo selected, hitting shift space and typing transform. And it's gonna pop up there. We want the transform XF one, click on that and hit enter. And now we've added the transform node. And because it sits in between the logo and the merge node, this is just going to control everything that's come before it in the node tree. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna click the transform node, we're gonna scale it down, just by going into our inspector. And again, if it's not visible, hit the inspector, scale it down to whatever size you want it to be. And then we're just gonna move, move it by clicking the handles and we're just gonna move it over into the corner. Lower thirds, referring to the lower third of the screen. And we're gonna do one more thing before we start and that is create our Instagram handle that we're going to obviously want appear in this video. So to do so, we're gonna grab the text node and we can do that just by grabbing this text here, text plus. And same thing, we're going to drag the output to the output of the merge so that we can see it on top. Obviously we don't see anything at the moment because we haven't typed anything. And here in the inspector, we can start typing out what we want to, you know, what our handle is. So we're gonna start with this, we're gonna go at, and then I'm just gonna do this one here. And this is, I think it's M. Reese. Hopefully I didn't butcher that. It's a follower of the channel and follower on Instagram. And so big shout out to this guy here. He doesn't know I'm doing this. And we're gonna just move it into position like so. And now we're pretty much good to go, all right? Now we need to start animating everything. What I like to do is start by piece by piece. So we're gonna start animating the logo first. We're gonna click the transform node. And to start animating, we just click these diamonds next to the parameter we want to animate over time. By clicking these diamonds, you're gonna create a keyframe and that's how we start the animation. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start at frame zero and we're gonna drop the size 
remember how big it is at the moment. We're gonna drop it to zero. And we're gonna hit a keyframe. So we're gonna start it at zero. And we're gonna move forward 10 frames and we're gonna size it back up again, okay? Roughly to where we were before. And then if we go back to zero and we hit spacebar, now we have, our, we have our Instagram logo scaling in and out. And that is gonna be our primary animation, okay? So that's first step. Then what we're gonna to wanna to do is we're gonna move forward a bit in time. Let's go to say frame, let's go to frame 60, which at 24 frames a second is roughly three seconds-ish. Actually, let's just go to 70. And we're gonna set another keyframe on the size. And the reason we set another keyframe is just so that the system knows that from frame 10 to frame 70, nothing changes. It stays the same size. Then we're gonna go down to frame 80 and we're gonna drop it back down to zero. Really simple animation. And so now what we have is from frame zero to 10, it gets goes from smaller, gets larger, then it stays the same for the duration it's on the screen for, and then at the very end, it shrinks back down. And that's our primary animation. Now we can add what we, I like to call secondary animation to this or secondary motion just to help sort of sell it. So what we're gonna do is at frame 10, with the transform node selected, we're going to hit a keyframe on the angle. And then when we go to frame zero, what we're going to do, is we're just going to move that angle just around a little bit. Doesn't matter what way you go, and doesn't matter how far, just a little bit. And now what we have, if we move this in, our logo kind of spins into place like so. Really, just a really easy way to sort of help sell the animation just a little bit better, which is with secondary motion. Now again, we can do the same with the sort of the zoom in, the shrinking bit at the end there. So we're gonna set another keyframe for the angle, just like we did for the size, so that it, nothing changes in between those frames. And we're gonna go down to 80, and we're just going to do another little bit of a sort of twist there. So now she twists as it disappears. Fantastic, all right. Now that the logo has been animated, we just need to animate the text. And currently, you know, we can select the text and we can move it around and that's fine. But we kinda of wanna have it come in from behind the logo. All right, so to do that, what we're gonna do is actually add a mask and that's going to sort of hide a section of the screen. So with the text node selected, we're just going to click this rectangle tool here and that's gonna create a rectangle mask. And as you can see, if we move this around, it cuts off a bit of the text. So we're gonna grab that rectangle, we're gonna move it and kind of line it up there with the side of the Instagram logo. And currently you can't see anything because, well, the way the mask is working is everything inside the rectangle is visible, everything outside is invisible. Well, if we go over to the inspector here, you'll see that straight up you have this invert option. It's gonna do exactly what we think it's gonna do. It's gonna reverse the process. So we're gonna do that. Now we can see the text. And if I was to select the text node and move it in and out, see, now we have it look like it's coming from behind the logo, which is pretty cool. So what we're gonna do is with the text node selected, we're gonna go over to the inspector. We're gonna go find the position parameter, which is under the layout tab. So the second tab along, and we're talking about the center X and Y. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna move it out of the way so we can't see it. Make sure we're on frame 10 for this. And we're gonna set a keyframe for the X and Y, which is referencing the position it sits on the Y, which is vertical, and the X, which is horizontal. Now we're gonna move forward, let's go forward, let's just go forward five frames. Keep it nice and simple. Gonna grab that handle and we're just gonna move it out just a little bit to there. All right, nice and easy. And now we have our animation, it pops in and out. And we're gonna leave it like that and we're gonna go forward to frame 70, all right, which is when this disappears. So what we're gonna do is five frames before that, all right, and we're gonna set another keyframe for the center X and Y. Move forward to frame 70, just before it starts to disappear, I'm gonna drag it back so we can't see it anymore. And you can see that we're following the exact same principles that we did with animating the logos. We're setting, you know, some anchor points, I'd like to call them, so that there is no animation taking place in between frame 15 and 65. And then we have our little bit of animation there at the end. And if we were to play this through from the start, you can see it looks pretty good, hangs out for a bit, which is what we want, so you can read it on the screen while you've got your video playing, and it disappears like so. Now, we could leave it at that, pretty much, you know, that's a nice, easy animation, and you've learned how to keyframe and a little bit of masking for text animation and all that sort of stuff, but we could take it a step further by opening up the spline editor. So we're gonna do that, so we're gonna drop, so we're gonna close the nodes, and we're gonna open up this spline editor. 
Now the spline editor is like a curve graph and it shows the animation over time. So if we open up the transform one, and this is referencing the transform node that we had, and this is an exact representation of the animation of the transform node for the Instagram logo that we created before. So just this one here. Okay, so I'm gonna close the notes section. And you can see we have our lines. And so these boxes here, these are our keyframes, and the lines in between represent the motion. So obviously between frame 10 and frame 70, there is no motion, so it's a nice straight line. But between 70 and 80, there is a bit of animation there. So the values are changing. So we've got a line. But as you can see, they're nice. But as you can see, the animation is actually quite a harsh line, which means it's quite abrupt. So I'm going to grab this corner here. And what we're going to do is hit this button here, smooth. And if we click that, you can see now we have a nice gradual animation. We'll do this on the other side. All right. So now we have our animation, which smooths in and smooths out and kind of a little bit at the top here, but it's still quite harsh at the top. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna grab that box and you can see we've got these little handles and I know it's getting a little bit more complicated now, but if we can just grab this handle here a little bit, we're gonna help just ease that animation so it's not super harsh. I'm gonna do it on the other side, just a little bit, nothing too fancy. All right, now as you can see here, the green line is for the angle. So that is the rotation of that particular object. Now we're gonna do the same for the size. So we're gonna select that first one, smooth it out. First one there, smooth it out and grab that one there. And all we're gonna do is pull it up a little bit, just like we did with the other one. And all that is doing is just giving us this nice, if we zoom in a little bit, it's giving us this nice like little S curve. So it's easing into the animation and easing out of the animation, which is exactly what we want. So now we're gonna turn off the transform so we don't see it. And we're gonna look at the text one center path. Now, if you can't see all the keyframes, you just click this button here, it's gonna resize everything. And again, we have our keyframe animation. So we've got our, these locks represent the keyframes and then the graph represents the animation. And just like before, we're gonna select the first one, we're gonna smooth it out. And then we're just going to select these keyframes here and we're just gonna pull that handle out to make that nice S curve that we did for all the other animations. All right, and this is the last thing you do, okay? Just, you can see that nice S curve, nice gradual graph is exactly what we want. And generally you won't notice a big difference, okay? But it will feel a lot better when watching it back. So I'm gonna open the nodes, spline editor. So if we play this back now, it should look a lot less jarring. So we're just gonna let it buffer a little bit. So you can see there, it just looks a little bit more natural and it's a lot, it's quite hard to see when you haven't been animating for a while, but it just doesn't look as jarring as the first animation. So, well, there you guys have it, a really quick and easy tutorial on how to create a social media lower thirds. I recommend you guys go out and do this one for yourself with maybe the Facebook or Inst or with maybe the Facebook or Twitter logo. So go out, give it a crack and yeah, tag me in the video. I'd love to see what you guys are doing and stay tuned on this channel. We're gonna do a more advanced version of this in the coming days, hopefully by the end of the week. And it's just gonna build upon the principles that we looked at here in this beginner tutorial and create a little bit more of a dynamic animation. So make sure you subscribe to the channel for that. And until the next video, I'll see you guys later.